I didn't know you were going to be here. <laughs> oh, ah, my goodness. Welcome to Covered Dish. Oh, cheers, Person queen. person edition. <laughs> Y'all. We love to see oh, it. Oh, back with a vengeance, baby. Covered Dish 2, The Reckoning. The reditioning. Ha- Ooh, the I like uncovering. that. The I like the uncovering. Cover dish to the uncovering. Mm, oh my god, yes. That's what we'll have to call our next live show. Oh yeah. The uncovering. Mm-hmm. Casserole. Hello everyone, which is probably just Joseph and Eileen's dad. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> We're here for you. <laughs> and mostly for us. Thank you for joining Cover Dish. <laughs> Primarily for us, yeah. <laughs> Me and Teddy. There we go. Yeah. Um, all great shows have teddies. Bob's Burgers has a teddy. Um, I'm Brooke Cardis, and this is Eileen saying. Galvin. Yeah. And That's, this, I, I, yeah. This is Covered Dish Live. Uh, in person. I'm yeah. very excited to be here. And what are we talking about tonight, girl? What aren't we talking about? Ooh. We're talking about confidence. We're talking about the opposite of confidence, which is insecurity. Um, and we're talking about what you call the thing around your neck. It's not an ascot. Is it just a scarf? No. I would call it a neck scarf or maybe a neckerchief if you're feeling <laughs> particularly jaunty. A neckerchief. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Well, in honor of being in person, I want you to do a strut and then I never get to do a strut. So I'm going to do a strut. Oh, y'all wanted a twist. Let's see what you're wearing, girl. Well, who is she? Um, okay. I have to push my office chair back over this terrible air rug. All right. <laughs> All right, so the 70s is back in the office. So we have a um, wide leg jumpsuit business edition. Um, I think the the chest situation Mm -hmm. is very nice. And you know what I love about a woven fabric, Brooke? What do you love about a woven fabric, Eileen? There's no ironing. Oh, that is nice. There's no wrinkles. They just pull themselves out. And then there's a nice little um, 70s self belt in the middle. You love a belt, you love a belt that comes with an outfit, is I, what I've discovered. Yeah, I do love a self belt, which for you at home means a belt that is made from the same fabric as the garment. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Oh. So you can mix and match, or if you want to look extra coordinated, you can... <laughs> there's a little footnote down there. Um, you can add the self belt to the outfit and feel like you really just planned it out. I love it. Yes. That's fabulous. And of course, as you know, on this channel, we are, um, serious about accessorizing. We are pro brooch and we won't apologize for it. So we have an autumn brooch and we have a, what did you, neckerchief. Neckerchief. Mm -hmm. Love it. And your earrings match. Yeah. And they've got little autumn, autumn leaves on the ears. All right, girl, switch with me. It's time for my runway walk. All right, girl. All right. I'm ready. Okay. Uh-uh. Cat, uh, cat, 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 cat. Uh, Boom. Uh, oh. This bodysuit was $8 on sale at TJ Maxx. <laughs> and these are the same black jeans I've been wearing for like two straight years. Oh, bam. Oh, hell yeah. And, what, what is that? Is that a desert boot we have? What, oh, I see yes. And then these are my very reliable Midwest boots. Yes. This is my bad hip that I have to hold up my leg for. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I love a bodysuit. I love a high-waisted pant. I refuse to wear low-waisted jeans. I'm just not doing it. I refuse to say it's my religion. No, what are, where are we? Britney Spears? <sighs> what is it. this, 98? And then I whale tail, and I have a big old butt. These are uh, earrings I got at H&M in 2009 that were $4, and then this is my lucky cougar ring. Lovely gal. You know, with a, with a power ring like that, you really don't need to wear any other clothes at all. And thank goodness I don't, because <laughs> Eileen always brings it, and then I am here. So, <laughs> you thank know what, you though? for letting me do the runway, girl. You know what, though? We, we are in black and neutrals tonight. We are. We so are I'm... actually pretty subtle. But you know what? This ring, and it leads right into our great topic, it is a shitty little ring. But you know what? I wore it for my first album. Let's see if it can focus. Yeah, it's kind of, it's missing mm. an eye. Like all adorable old cats. <laughs> but I love it because it gives me confidence. Yeah. I love wearing it on stage. It's like a dumb, silly ring, but it gives me confidence. So what is like something that gives you confidence that you wear? Is there some like article or something you put on where you're like, bam? Or is it like your hair? Well, yeah. You know I, mean, I mean, my hair my hair is, is one of those things because I think it's sort of a... Um, uh, there's not a lot of other purple bowl cuts walking around. Mm, so it, is, it is a distinguishing feature, mm-hmm. you know? It's definitely going to show up on the police sketch. Yeah, for sure. The for sure. Is, they just draw... They won't remember anything else. They just draw a purple mushroom. And it's like, oh, it's Eileen. <laughs> <laughs> I actually love... When we were out to dinner, 
Well, like you ordered a lavender cocktail, and the woman's like, "It's gonna match your hair." And, Jesus, like, <laughs> and I was like, "I planned it." Right. I, she was really I saw lavender on the menu when I ordered it. Obviously, so. you have to. So consistency. Yeah. So I would say um, having a cohesive brand. Yeah. Um, that gives me confidence. Yeah, I feel that. I'm like sturdy Fonzie outfits. You know what I mean? I like to I, be ready. I think you might be selling yourself short. Really? Yeah. All right. Well, sturdy yeah. Fonzie. Yeah, like kind of like a thicker Midwest. Hey. <laughs> I call in. What, do, what? How do you feel about this description? Because I have, true. I have thoughts. Or I'm like not sure. goth vampire extra on a CW show from mm. 2003. Oh yeah. See, yeah. I like that one better. Mm -hmm. That's like mm -hmm. True Blood. Yes. Yeah. 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 Like a werewolf's girlfriend on True Blood. Yeah. Yeah. Like someone who. Um, was like a secret villain on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yes. Yeah. I had such a crush on Spike. Oh, who didn't? Ah, <laughs> Spike was so good. Angel can just no. Remember when they just fucked and a house fell on them? I do remember that. Amazing. Ah, oh, such a good episode. Oh, anyways. Anyway, we're confidence. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna start singing the musical episode and from Buffy. It's gonna be all things. So all over. Uh, yes, confidence. Sometimes things are external, but I, specifically yeah. we're talking tonight about confidence and insecurity and kind of how you manage it in relationships. Yeah. Oh, it's what's on the inside that counts. But is it? That's the question we're here to ask tonight. <laughs> is it really? No. Um, but yeah, I mean, confidence has to start from within, right? If you, yeah. if you don't like yourself and you wear like clothes that look powerful, if you don't believe it, it's not gonna make you feel confident. Yeah. So... Well, I think it's really interesting. I, I, in a, I was in a breakup one time, and I used this line, and I really shouldn't have used it in the breakup because it wasn't very nice, <laughs> but it was accurate. And the line was, your self-esteem is your job. Yeah. And it really is interesting because the way confidence and insecurity shows up in relationships, you often are buttressing your partner's insecurity in really sweet, meaningful ways. So like, oh my God, I mean, every partner... Every person has body image issues, right? Because we're mm -hmm. people who are alive. So, right, like, if you're like, oh, my God, I feel so fat. Your partner's like, no, you're perfect. Blah. Like, that's that's what they do, Yeah. right? And that's not bad, right? Um, the difference between that and needing all of your energy and self-esteem from one person, do you know what I mean, is crippling. Yeah. Well, you have to get your, uh, you have to get your affairs in order before you're really in a receptive place to support a relationship. Right, right. Um, I, sometimes when I'm not feeling so good, I gotta, like, step out, you know? And not, not like, take, step out of this plane? Or, like, step out, what do you mean? Of the room. Of the, <laughs> of the, maybe of the room. Uh, no, but, you know, like, the, you know there's times where you um, just don't feel like you're gonna be great company. Mm -hmm. And often that correlates for me of not feeling very confident or mm -hmm. I'm not in the best place. And so honest, honesty and open communication in a relationship is like, maybe we shouldn't go on that gondola ride right now because yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to appreciate Venice. Maybe we should. Right. <laughs> but if you, well, that's actually not a good example of, because what if the plane tickets are non-refundable? Like <laughs> right. You got to go to Venice and just like sort of fake it till you uh, make but it. But if you're like at the Venetian in Vegas and you cancel that gondola ride, it's going to be fine. Yeah. You know, just the gondola goes, yeah. you can go through the big, but anyways. Most situations are not a gondola ride. No, but I think, you know what, this kind of goes back to the surprises thing. Like, I think this is, we've talked about that on here too, where it's like, okay, how are you managing and what are the, your expectations in a relationship when it comes to that stuff in terms of like, hey, I'm not my best self tonight. Yeah. I'm just letting you know I'm not going to be confident. Right. Like, I um, had a trip canceled to Columbus for personal reasons um, and I was really looking forward to some friend time and I my mental health was not in a good place. Let's get it real. Um, I was just overworked and tired and I really needed time with you and with my friends. And yeah. when that got canceled through a completely leg legitimate reason, it took me a couple of days and I thought I was good. And then seven or eight days later, it came back with a vengeance and I was like, fuck, I'm down. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was in good company and I tried to fake a couple of things, but like, it's dinner night and all. I, mean, I just, I couldn't even, try. the energy when you're in the space like that and you're feeling insecure the energy to even show up, it was like I had nothing in the bank. Like I was pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling. And yeah. my poor partner was amazing and took a photo of me. And I was like, I look fucking disgusting. Like it was, it was an unrealistic expectation of what I looked like. I, I could not handle seeing myself. 
Yeah, when everything feels like a monumental effort. Exactly. To just get there. And sometimes, so if, if it's like a trip where there's multiple things planned... Um, I really, I did not set us up great by using the gondola ride example. Because that, <laughs> yes. that just seems like a really big singular activity. What about kayaking? Well, I was going to say like, what if you have a family reunion? Oh, um, we don't have those in my family. We, no comment, but uh, no, <laughs> my parents are going to be like, <laughs> I mean, first of all, they probably listening very carefully me, about the comments of the family yeah. reunion that just happened. Let me rework that. Uh, our my family may have reunions that I'm not invited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not aware of them. <laughs> I stopped getting the invite. Uh, but if it's a whole itinerary, maybe there's some adjustments you can make. Like, right. for instance, if everyone is going to be staying at the same Airbnb, maybe you book a hotel nearby. I can never do this. Oh, girl, oh Al. <laughs> Let's put my hair on your leg. Oh. Okay. My bosom friend. <laughs> Have I you guess. ever... Is that from Anne of Green Gables? Have you ever had a bosom friend? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of that. But I'm also glad the Penny Voice has made an appearance. Mm -hmm. uh, Miss Eileen. So. Oh, um, my Penny. Yeah, you know, it's me, so, Penny. So. So, <laughs> so you know what I mean? You can, stay, you can stay somewhere close by, but you don't have to be in the same place with them all the time. Yes. I am also a big fan of that. Like, I... I think there's this expectation now that we're getting older. <laughs> <laughs> there's this like expectation that's like, okay, yeah, like come stay in my house. And I'm like, or don't. Don't yeah. come stay in my house. Or stay in my house for a limited number of nights, but like also get a, get a hotel. Or Let's, take care of yourself because yeah. I have friends that like wouldn't stay at my place until they saw my place. And they're like, oh, okay, I can have my own space here. But, like, you got to take care of yourself, especially when it comes to, like, for me, mm -hmm. uh, food is really tied to how I feel. And yeah. what I put in my body is what I get out in, like, extreme ways. Like, so annoying. One of my exes would be like, I'd be like, that had more salt than normal. And they're like, you're so fucking dramatic. And I'm like, I'm bloated for, like, four hours. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're like, it was an ah uh, onion ring. You know what I mean? But, like, that's just how I am. So, like, yeah. my confidence and insecurity can really pull from, like, the stuff I'm putting in my body. Mm -hmm. And I always have to check in on that. I'm sure some body dysmorphia shit that isn't healthy, but also just on a feeling thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, I had a delicious brownie from Fox in the Snow, and I don't regret it. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm also super bloated. Like, that's just what you deal with, right? So the insecurity of, like, in my 20s, I might not wear this. And they're like, oh, whatever. And I'm like, got a little muffin top sticking out of my body suit, but that brownie was no good. And, like, that's it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But figuring out what your confidence is tied to as well. Well, speaking of insecurity, as you were talking, I was thinking about when you get older, you have to, you have to budget so much more of your time, mm -hmm. of your eating, of how late you're staying out. And, um, that's frustrating because you're used to not needing to, um, think about as many parameters before. Yep. And now all of a sudden, Oh, maybe I can't do that show where I stay out until oh my God, two oh in the yes. morning, and then my like I actually fall asleep at three a.m. You know, back when I was twenty-three, sure, God. I could do that a couple times. Do you remember? Do you remember the days when we could stay out as late as we wanted? It's part of the reason that like going to a new comedy scene has been so hard. Mm. Cause like here, love Columbus, and so it's good. Miami, so oh people are God. staying out until what four or five a.m. Oh my God, I can't do it, and like especially. I have connections in Columbus. I When I moved to Miami, I didn't have any connections. And it's like, oh, if you don't have connections, you're on the bottom of the open mic. Like, you're the last. And I'd be like, I have to go to bed. Like, I just was like. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I think that to your point, like, sleep is tied to so much of that. And it's, a, and it's a precious resource now. Oh, can you sleep well? Like, are you a sleeper? <laughs> can you sleep anywhere? Uh... I had to really think about that. That question brought me somewhere. It did. It brought me to the, I was like instantly on the therapist couch. Yes. I'm like, how's like, your sleeping? I was like, I, I mean, I, are these, is this billable? Because <laughs> before I get into it, I need to know how much of your time I'm going to get. Do you validate? Only spiritually. <laughs> yeah, only spiritually. Um, you might be verified on Twitter, but are you verified <laughs> in the eyes of God? <laughs> and the Blue Cross Blue Shield. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, how do you um, sleep? Wow, still threw me for a loop. Um, I sleep generally pretty well mm -hmm. if I am in my own space and I feel secure. Okay, okay. Secure, confident. Because nowadays, um, as I get older, my anxiety about certain things gets worse. And some of that might be like the macro, like mm -hmm. the way things are in the world. Some of it is just getting older and seeing more of the, like, how short life is. And like, 
I don't know, random, random thoughts appear in my head about like, what if someone breaks in? I need like to have something by the bed. You know what oh I mean? Oh my God. Laura Sanders, amazing New Orleans comedian mm -hmm. who tours a lot in Chicago and Columbus to so check her out, has a joke about like every time being in a room, figuring out what she could use as a weapon. Yeah. Like, oh. Shampoo. <laughs> Get in the chat if you use the extra locks, like the slide locks, or if they have the that little bar, the 90 degree bar that flips out and prevents someone from opening the door. In you know a hotel room? Yeah. A hundred percent of the all, time. Every, any lock that is there, I will be using. You want to talk, no, 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 you want to talk crazy. Now, I've also been followed in my hotel room. And I travel a lot for work, and it's only happened twice in my whole life. So I just want to point out it's very rare. Mm -hmm. um, I was followed by two uh, men, not at the same time. But... Rare, but no less scary. But no less scary. But I yeah. say, like, statistically, I mean, I've done, I've had right. so many solo work trips to only have been followed twice. And I did that trick where, like, so they were on, one of them was on the um, elevator with me. So then um, he had followed me around for a couple hours. So I knew what was happening. And he, I pressed the button first. He pressed no button because he was getting on, he was like, I'm just going to follow you to your floor. Mm -hmm, right. Mm hmm. We get to my floor, the door opens, and I stay on the elevator. So now he's in the position where he ha like it's awkward and he has to get off the elevator. So yep. I had a security escort me out. Blah, blah, blah. Anyways. That's really smart, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good pro tips. On the dish. Yeah. So you don't pro get tips on the dish. Murdered. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but wow. I, when I go into hotel rooms. Yeah. This is not healthy, so don't do this necessarily. Do I tip A. Don't do tip B. Search everywhere. I mean, I double check sh behind the shower. I double check the closets. I don't know why that's not a good idea. Old habits, man. Old habits die hard. You want to be sure when I. So this is not a safe story. When I stayed uh, in Ypsilanti for a show a couple Jesus years ago, Christ, I went to a Super Eight, checked in with the night clerk at like two a.m. Sounds like the beginning of a Stephen King novel. Uh, and we went out. They you were in alone. I was with two other people. And they, you're Thank all goodness. burlesque dancers. Uh, a photographer and two burlesque dancers. Jeez. So, same thing. So we go outside. <laughs> so many vintage bags. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the one has lots of leather because it's full of cameras. <laughs> yes. So we step outside into the February 2 a.m. Michigan Jesus. air. And we go up the side staircase. Um, now, now it's going from Stephen King to Silent Hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we yeah. go up to the, the icy, like, yeah, 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 everything. There's like an, an air raid siren. There's like Jesus. monsters in the shadows. No, we go up the staircase on the outside to the second, um, the second floor, uh, uh um, rooms that have exterior doors. Mm -hmm. We get to our room and the door is open. Hell no. I'm not even kidding. In the middle of snowfall in February in Michigan, the door is open. Jesus. So we like, we slowly creep the door open and I, it was, I don't, I think it was just because it was so late and we were mm -hmm. so tired. Oh, exhausted. And cold. Yeah. That we, and cold. We didn't want to go back down the stairs and go back to the desk. So we just, we just did a sweep of the room. Jesus. Just looked under the beds, pulled back the shower curtain. Clear, clear, you know? <laughs> And then there was nothing, there was nothing. There was no one in there. Right, 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 right. So we were just like, cool, let's close the door and go to bed. But it was, mm -hmm. it was nuts. And it wasn't, it Chances wasn't. surviving. <laughs> here's the scary part too. Because I remember that the room was not that cold. So you know what that tells me? The door hadn't had been open for that mm -hmm. long. Mm -hmm. It's amazing Eileen Galvin is here with us today. <laughs> Um, it's amazing through all of we our persevere. transgressions, but oh, yeah. what do you do? And if you want to know more, more about that, you can watch our previous episodes on our YouTube <laughs> channel. <laughs> yeah. So we can always talk about confidence among ourselves in our relationships. And I think that's also important, but you know, just what, what do else you is do? there? No. What do you, yes, <laughs> what do you do in a partnership or a relationship, even a friendship when someone is struggling with confidence? Like, oh, to support them. Yeah. That's a great question. Well, you know, give them more space. Like if you are going on, I don't know, a gondola ride in Venice. Still on this fucking <laughs> gondola ride. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> but maybe uh, just listen a little bit more and offer alternatives. Because sometimes when you're not confident and you th you're, you're scared that you're not going to show up in a certain way yeah. that you're expecting of yourself, just kind of um, be willing to compromise and negotiate. Like, hey, it's okay. If we don't get on this gondola, it's not going to ruin my life. Right, right. Do I think you... it's lowering the stakes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But being really explicit about it. Mm-hmm. Because that's what I would want from someone else. Absolutely, absolutely. 
I don't believe people when they tell me that. They're like, no, it's not that big of a deal. I'm like, is it? (laughs) I'm fun to date. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) You're like, what is this, a Zircon? I expected a diamond. (laughs) What is this, a cubic zirconium? (laughs) Trash. Uh, Thrown in the fire. Oh my God. I remember all I wanted. All I wanted once was an emerald, and then I got told oh, by God. I got told by the jeweler I'm too clumsy to have such a soft jewel. All I wanted was an emerald. <laughs> Beryl is not that soft. Ah, uh, they were. They, well, I'm very. Someone clumsy. lied to her several I times. I bet they did. Someone lied to her several times. Beryl is not that soft, actually. You could have. You could have done with a nice. Little, fucking tell me about it. Nice little emerald. I took ge- I took honors gemstones as my science requirement. You in fucking college. did not. I did. That's how okay. gay I was. Honors gemstones. Honors is also honors gemstones. A great drag name. Teacher's pet <laughs> sissy boy. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. I honors sure did. Honors gemstones. I- <laughs> All right, now I'm embarrassed, so we can move on. I love this. The more times we say honors gemstones, like the less confident you're I become. You're conjuring something. <laughs> it's my honors insecurity. Gemstones, honors... <laughs> you look in the mirror and you say honors gemstones five times. Okay, I can out I can out embarrass you in college. Um, we okay. had a gym requirement, and if you know me, I am a combination of klutzy and not athletic when it comes to team anything. But extremely determined. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which leads to like broken bones. So, um, I took ballet one, and if you know anything about me, you know it was hilarious. But the teacher was a former Balanchine trained, and if you know anything about the Russian school of ballet, that is fucking intense. Pain. Uh, Balanchine trained ballerina. Wow. Like trained under Balanchine and was retired. Right. Um, under the Balanchine school, and like in Russia. Yeah. And is also a, was a Tai Chi master. That's so cool. So the class was breathtaking. Like it was a couple minutes of plies, and then we literally did Tai Chi. And like she told us about her life in Russia. Amazing. So I convinced her to let me do two semesters of ballet one and two semesters of ballet two as my gym requirement. But when we got to ballet two, there were like leaps and stuff. So what? <laughs> so so all what the- have we learned? What have we learned about Brooke Cardis? Quick pop quiz. Um, you said uh, maybe a little bit clumsy. That's fine. We can own that. Extremely determined. Yes. Fierce negotiator. Yes. Ruthless negotiator. Ruthless negotiator. Maybe slightly overconfident at times. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) So in ballet two, all the girls will like go across and do the little like, let me see if I can do it. Like run, run, run. Run, run, Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever that's called. Jeté. Remember my, but yeah, like really up there and split the legs. Yeah. Okay. Grand jeté. Grand jeté. Okay. So there's the dancers, right? And then there's Brooke. So I just got, went, (laughs) (laughs) and she let me go across these like fucking breathtaking dancers. There were dance majors in the class and they're like, who is this butterbean in a leotard? And I'm like, hi! <laughs> I've always been a thick-ass loaf. Oh, it my was God. Great. Anyways, yes. You were like, you were like Brooke Shields in the revival of Cabaret. <laughs> but, like, she can't dance Fosse, so she just hops. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, it was great. Oh, that's... In- I love that. You know, um, this is a little off topic. Shocking! Breaking news! <laughs> just wanted to make sure that was okay. <laughs> Is that going to be okay? that gay news? Yeah. Is that going to be okay? <laughs> I think I'll make it work. I love uh, interdisciplinary dancers, mm. especially with martial arts, mm-hmm. because I—I I don't know if you knew this about me, Brooke. I am an interdisciplinary martial artist and dancer. Uh, Throw that kerchief. Dancer later in life, but a martial yeah. arts earlier. But I've seen uh, people move between these two movement yes. traditions. And it's so unexpected because even as a, if you don't know a lot about dance or you don't know a lot about martial arts, yeah, I still feel like you can watch something and recognize that these movements are martial or these movements are performance. What is the martial part? Well, they're more uh, they're more um, percussive. Okay. Tai Chi is different because they're flowing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you can still tell like the the intention behind it is that you're interacting with the kinetic energy and mm-hmm. weight of another body. You used to do Tai Chi in our backyard. I did. Love that. I used to do Tai Chi in the courtyard of my uh, residence hall at OSU. Talk about not wanting to make any friends. <laughs> Confident. 
Delusional. Delusional. I actually, I'll let's, to that. let's trace that story farther back. When I moved here for uh, the second time, we, we spent a brief couple of years in Upper Michigan, mm-hmm. then we moved back mm-hmm. here for sixth grade. And my gay ass went outside where the neighborhood kids were playing football with pom-poms. Jesus Christ. And I was their personal cheerleader, and I thought, this is the tactic that's going to get me friends in the neighborhood. I swear to God. Girl. I was so confident. How did that go? How do you think it went? I don't think it went well. No. I <laughs> I connected I connected with uh, the other weirdo in the neighborhood. Oh, well, that's great. And we got along great. So I think we won, you know? And look at you now. It's kind of like when... Yeah, you won. It's kind of like on dating profiles when you put uh, the weird stuff out there so that yeah. you can just screen people early on. And it's like, if this is going to be a problem... Thanks let's for, wrap it up. Yeah, let's wrap it up. We don't need to. We need to spend oh a lot God. of extra time on this. I was just talking this. to a friend of mine who's getting back on the dating apps, and she was so funny. And she's like, "I put it all out there." She's like, "It says Black Lives Matter and pro abortion." Like, why waste it's the not time? A lot of space, and it's like, she's like, "I'd rather do that." Me too. Like, let's wrap it the fuck up. I don't want to be like, "Hey, I'm Scorpio." I'm not. No, fuck off. These are the things I'm into. These are the things I'm not. Don't message me. Yeah. And on the flip side, on maybe the like a little bit less. Uh, productive side if people put stuff on there that is very confident but something that is a problem Ooh, like what well okay you know how the gays are i do know how the gays are it's a little rough on dating apps but sometimes there <laughs> there's this well-documented phenomenon where people will say things like no femmes no fats no asians i swear to god very common oh, on dating apps fucking god and is it a shit show yes but also don't have to spend any extra time talking to that person. At, even if you're none of the above, because fuck that person. Yeah, it works exactly. out really well. You know, Dan Savage. I'm not trying to give them credit. No, in no, no, any no, no, way, no, no. But, but talk about eliminating lining. yourself from trash. Yeah. You know, it was interesting because Dan Savage had um, a disability rights activist who's in a wheelchair on their um, pod, or their podcast, Savage Love, which is problematic and also enjoyable to listen to at the same time. Does Dan use they them pronouns? No. Oh, okay. Sorry, so I. I Sorry, everyone's they them. I understand. To me, I just I automatically go they I them just, now. Sorry, I, I like I know just enough about Dan Savage to know that of, he didn't go as they them. So I was just pertinent yes. information. Okay. So Dan Savage has a problematic <laughs> bipo- biphobic past, but he has done a good job of learning, and we always want to credit the learners. He would. He has what I would call a growth trajectory. He does, he and does. I don't want to take that away from him. And it's tied to capitalism for him, so it was essential for him to survive. But. It was interesting because the disability rights activist was like, look, I'm in a wheelchair, I'm, I'm dating apps, and I don't want you to date me to prove to yourself that you can go on a date with someone in a wheelchair. And That's it was gross. just like, and I forget their gender, because uh, again, gender's dumb. But they were like, yeah, and it was just a really interesting thing where it's like, yeah, like so many times people are going out with people just to prove well, I don't even care about that. Like, it doesn't even matter to me. And it's like, am I fucking being fetishized for your self-confidence? Yes. Speaking at the confidence. at the expense of your dignity. Mm-hmm. And that's, like, if we dig just a layer deeper into that for that person, if you have questions or explorations or whatever, just don't do it at the expense of someone else's dignity and personhood. Right. There's a lot of ways to take care of that yourself. Now, I'm saying that in a very simple sentence, but I understand that it takes a little bit of work to realize when that's happening. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. But, but, I'm but not, it's also the work we all have to do. It's the work we all have to do. Yeah. So, it's necessary. Yeah. But I'm like, don't go out with me to prove anything for yourself. Yeah. The frustrating thing, too, is in moments like that, because I've been fetishized when I was a young gay man who was interested in older you gay men. You horrible stories about that. And some of them were kind of fun, but, <laughs> but also scary and not the safest, so I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> Check out our safe word episode. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to write a memoir about what not to do in oh your youth. Oh my God. Uh, but anyway, so I was fetishized for that reason. And then of course, when I transitioned, mm. welcome to being a woman, you get fetishized for all of those reasons too. Well, and it was all of it, right? It was like the double bind of being a trans woman. Like, yeah. You just are dealing with all of the misogyny plus the homophobia. Yeah, the transphobia, and the misogyny, the and then yeah. there's a special kind of, like, the Venn diagram of the middle of it is its own special kind of degrading. Yeah, so, the vitriol um, specifically towards trans women. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah, but there's that thing about experimentation, right? I've always, right. I've always been interested in the trans woman. It's like, cool. That makes me feel, <laughs> that makes me feel really great as a as a complex individual. I love edamame hummus. You don't see me doing this, right. fucking weirdo. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, I literally was like, go to the sex store and buy a dildo and figure yourself out. Yeah. Yeah. And I wish you the best. Here's well, a, yeah. Actually, I don't. That's. <laughs> Actually, I don't. I know we like to say that. You heard that. it here first, folks. Actually, I don't wish you the best. I don't wish you the best. I wish you the mo- lukewarm at best. I okay. wish that you do better. Yeah, do better. Yeah. Educate yourself. Whether or not you do... Whether or not... What was it? Wish you the best? Whether or not you live your best life is none of my business. Mm. So accurate. Because you're surely not making my life your business. No. Absolutely. Never again. Mm. I like this. I like this confident Eileen. Honest this true tea on the dish tonight. Fucking Manhattan. Also, I love swirling this. You know, I have this like secret, like not so secret. I was told my whole dating life in my 20s. I was yeah. too butch, which I think is hilarious. I mean, you wore a baseball cap that one time. I do. wear. I love baseball caps. <laughs> <laughs> I stand by it. When do you wear them now? I don't see to the gym. Now. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Don't everyone's like my everyone's butch at the gym, right? There. That Lindsay just did today doesn't it look nice? Luxurious. Check out Lindsay Gilligan at mm. Salam Loafs. Vidal Radio. Sassoon. <laughs> <laughs> smells like chemicals. <laughs> mm. So, um, but I was told that, you know, and it's so funny because, like, I feel very, like, I don't know, I feel very, like, George Clooney, like, with my little cocktail. Oh, like, I love it. But I, I love that energy. I love my masculinely confident side. And mm-hmm. people associate it. Yeah. So my, who I play on stage comes off as more masculine yeah to people and i've actually really it's been interesting because the folks i've been attracted to that have worked long term oftentimes don't see me on stage right away Mm. and it's interesting because i think it is such a persona but the people i've dated that have been fans never a good idea by the way did it twice three times the person I was on stage was like more masculine and more confident and when my like insecurities came out they were like what is this but, like, you were this on stage. I'm like, it's all a show. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a persona. I don't get that. It's a persona, and it's an extension of who we are. Mm. You and I both, are, our stage personalities are... So connected. Connected. Yeah. You can't just treat them as discrete entities because they're just different aspects of the same person. Yeah. But um, consider this. Let me reflect this off of you and see what you think. Women being confident, that's complicated, right? <laughs> that's complicated. The perception of feminine confidence. Yeah, yeah. Not only is femininity complicated in a culture that in some ways puts it up on a pedestal, in other ways degrades it and treats yeah. it as less than. So the idea of feminine confidence... Is an oxymoron. It feels like an oxymoron sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and what's wild is those of who are like, oh my God, I love a confident woman. And I'm like, tell me more about that, dude. Yeah. What does that mean for you? Exactly. I have had some performances where the moments at the bar afterward, mm-hmm. you get off stage, you put your robe on, mm-hmm. you want to go to the bar and get yourself a drink. You're approached by a strange man. Girl. What are some of the what are some of the compliments or comments mm. that you've received at the bar after a performance? The first thing out of every annoying man's mouth. You know, I've always been told I should do stand up. What do you like, what do you think they expect from you in that moment? Oh my god, you should. Validation. You're Validation. so funny. We've never talked. Yeah. But I feel that good about it. How about you? Number one comment. Uh, I had no idea that you weren't a woman. Ooh. <laughs> Fuck. So let me tell you something about being a woman and being a trans woman specifically is and, and being a performer. All these things, you have to Jesus. find your confidence and you have to grow a thick skin because otherwise it'll it'll just like you can't let it get to you. But here's the thing is not letting it get to you is also like You've had to build that up after years or months of it getting to you. Yeah. 
Well, and also, I, I'm like, you can't let it get to you, but also you we have all to deal with it at moments. some point. Because yeah. if you bottle it up, it will kind of erode you from the inside. And that's why I think the community of performers that you find and you love and you care for is so important. Yeah. Because you have those common experiences. And that's kind of what pulled us together on the dish that for the in the first place. Mm. I wouldn't I wouldn't be doing the dish with anyone else, Brooke. Girl! <laughs> if no one else has a really expensive Zoom account, I know what you're in it for. Oh, oh. Mm. <laughs> just kidding, I just upgraded. And I'm feeling real bougie about it. Mama's got the premium Zoom Ayos. account. <laughs> Anyways, it is 7.35. We went over breaking news. Oh, is it, is it time already? Oh do you, do you, am I supposed to check my watch like this or am I supposed to check it like this? I don't know. Oh, I feel like you'd have a pocket watch in like your waist pocket. In a this waistcoat. outfit would have a pocket in the like. Yes, it is the brooch. Well, you know we've covered a lot of ground, so we always we invite you now, as always, to let us know what you want to hear about on the dish. So comment on our videos, send us a message on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, let us know what issues we're not covering because yes, we are we are not we are not ladies who shy away from the women's issues, issues like flan, flan or war. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. It's a broad spectrum. It is. It's a huge, it's a broad spectrum. Um, you know what? Like here, my masculinity and femininity <laughs> spectrum is very broad. Let's let's put it this way. If you if you want to like challenge us a little bit, give us two completely different topics. Ah, and then make us put them together. And just dare us to connect them. And you know what? We will. We absolutely will. Guarantee you we will. Uh, quick shout out. If you are in Columbus, Ohio tonight and are looking to venture out in this beautiful Kind of stormy, like a kind of apocalyptic even evening. Which the is kind stormy of fun. transitional season. Yes, I love it. Um, I will be at Rambling House with Eileen Galvin doing a show. Yes, uh, so presently. Come through if you want. And also, if you're a pseudo killer, we told you where we're going to be. Don't come. Yeah. Oopsie coopsie. Um, <laughs> but, also, but also, if you're a serial killer, we're not the ones. No, I, I'll tell you what. I'm very thorough about checking all my surroundings. So yeah. I'm not your one. We love you all individually and collectively, and we will see you next week on Lady Dare. All right. Bye, everyone. We love Bye. you. Mwah.